Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Soulcation Podcast. I'm your host, Logan Renee. I'm super excited, guys. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and I have two special guests. I have my close friend, Jasmine, and my sister, Candice. Welcome to the podcast, ladies. Hey, Thank you. Thanks for having us. <laughs> it's about to be so much fun. Um, so this is very conversational. We're going to have like Girl side chat, I'm just letting you all enter into the living room with um, people that I love and respect and into the conversations that we have with each other. So make sure you all grab some coffee or grab some tea and um, we're going to spill some for you. Okay. (laughs) So just so you know where we are in our lives, Jasmine and I are dating and Candace is married. So today's episode is going to be about being single in 30 and some of the questions that we were asked. So the top two questions that we were asked or asked continuously is when you having a baby and when you going to get married? (laughs) We are always asked those two questions. What are y'all experiencing with that, ladies? Well, uh, for me, um, I thought that when I was asked, you know, when are you planning on getting married? I felt like... I was put on the spot. I, I felt like, you know, like that's all you can ask me. I mean, is there nothing else that you want to talk or ask me about what's going on in my life? Like, if I was getting married, clearly I would let you know. You know, there's no need for you to ask me every single time that you know, I come or, you know, we see each other when you plan on getting married. Right. <laughs> so I felt like, in some cases, it wasn't coming from a good place. Right. I felt like, you know, again, if there's something I, I want to tell you, I'll share it with you. You don't have to always leave with that question every single time I talk to you. Right. Every time. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that was sort of my response. But I would, I, mean, I would always answer the question and say, well, you know, one day soon and I'll keep you posted. I'll right. let you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, I can kind of agree with pretty much with most of what Candace said. For me, it was, I kind of got offended a little bit. Like, why is my worth or my value attached to me being somebody's wife? Like, why do I have to, I mean, I was, I have three degrees. So I've been in school several times. I've graduated several times. Ask me how class going. I mean, now granted, I got sick of, when you graduate again, I got tired of that question too. But ask me something else about me that I have control over. I'm not proposing to myself and I'm definitely not proposing to a man. So I don't have control (laughs) over when I am getting married. And then it's kind of like, if you know that I'm not currently dating somebody, you haven't heard me talk about a relationship or a boyfriend. I'm not even in a relationship right now. So your first question when you see me definitely should not be, so when you get married, you haven't seen us post a picture on Instagram. Nothing. I haven't even brought anybody to a family function. Ever. So why, like, why? Where is this question even coming from? And yeah, so just just stop. Mind your business. <laughs> Mind your business. You were talking uh, about something with Candace before we started about something that you and her had a conversation about. You mind sharing that with the podcast? Yeah. So um, Candace uh, was previously engaged prior to marrying her amazing husband that she is married to now. And um, obviously she didn't marry that person because she's married to someone else. And I just thought that it was absolutely amazing that she had the courage and the strength um, to walk away from an engagement. Um, Because at that time, if I'm not mistaken, Candice, you were already 30 or past 30 at that time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, of course, when we turn 30, we hit that age. It's kind of like the, you know, point of return or whatever. It's like doomsday, quote unquote, for women at times, especially in terms of finding love and having kids and that sort of thing. So for her to reach that point, and be past that age and say, you know what, this still isn't the person for me and to have the strength to walk away from that. I really admired and respected that. And um, it was just a, a, an amazing thing to be able to see. What made you um, do that, Candace? Well, um, <coughs> I didn't have peace about moving forward. Like, I wasn't settled within. And, and when I looked at the future, in my mind and what it could potentially look like with this person now going forward. Because when you get married, you know, it's not for, you're gonna try this out or two years, a couple years to see how it works out. I mean, you don't wanna enter a covenant 
with a temporary mindset, mm. you know? And so I just felt like, you know, it wouldn't be um, best for me to proceed with something if I wasn't a hundred percent in, you know? And so, and you're right. People ask me, you know, why won't you marry him? I mean, cause again, he, he is a great guy. I mean, he's a great guy now, but um, it just didn't work out. Um, and he wasn't the right guy for me. And, you know, so, but people ask me, you know, why, why won't you marry him? You know, he's a great guy. He got X, Y, and Z going on. He did. Um, I was told that you wouldn't find anybody else better. Mm. Um, I was told that, you know, most women would be happy to have a man that will marry them. Mm. And what's wrong? And to articulate to someone that I don't have peace about it, I prayed about it and, I just don't feel comfortable or feel like this is God's will for me, then why would I proceed? Why, why put myself in that person in that predicament? And so I'm glad I listened um, to my own heart and chose my own path. I mean, because at the time I was what, 35 ish, I think 35, you know, and um, I'm grateful that I listened to my own my own soul and I prayed about it and God closed that door. That's so good. And he opened another one. He did. I opened very one. shortly <laughs> after. <laughs> very, very shortly after. Y'all better listen to y'all soul. You better listen to your soul. You have to. You better you have to be true to who you are. Yeah. yeah. You know, you have to. But I think that that comes with being in a space where you're comfortable with you. You knew who you were when you made that decision. You had solid footing. You loved Candace enough to say, I'm not going to leave myself in this situation. A lot of times we are, un when we are unsure of certain things or we don't fully love ourselves or we're so beholden to society's views or family voices, we, we keep ourselves in situations that are toxic or that we know aren't for us. But you were able to make that decision from a sure place. You knew where you stood with God. You knew where you stood with yourself. And you were able to make that confident choice and, and you weren't wavering on it because you knew it wasn't right. It's a lot easier to listen to yourself when you know where you stand with something versus a person that is on a sure footing or they haven't completely healed from other right. things and they're not as self-aware and as self-confident. Most definitely. And I'm sure y'all, she was scared. Like, I mean, just yeah. thinking like, because you didn't like, know. Exactly. I mean, he and I have been together for almost seven years. So it's just like, look at the time, mm -hmm. you know, and all the memories that we've created. And it's just like, Lord, I, I have to start over. Mm. I've got to start over from scratch, essentially. And um, yeah, it was a scary spot, but I was just like, you know what, Lord? This is what's up. Here's where <laughs> I am, and yeah. I trust you. Yeah. That's Let's good. move out. Yeah. I trust you. That's good. Yeah. So we're going to go over some questions, ladies, that we might have been asked or have been asked because we have been asked these questions. Uh, one for me was, uh, do you think you're being too picky or you're sending out the wrong energy? And I'm just like, <laughs> first of all, I can't believe the person that even asked me that question. But at the same time, what does that even mean? What does that look like? You know, most of the time you're walk, especially me, I'm always trying to make sure I'm being myself and being comfortable in my skin. So putting out the wrong energy or acting like I'm being picky, no, I have a desire and changing that or shifting that for other people is not me being myself. So that, that question definitely irritated me. What about y'all? Well, I feel like you should always be nice. Right. Always be nice. My uncle, who's been married 51 years now, yeah. told me a long time ago, just, just be nice because you just never know yeah. at any point when, if this person is for you or not, but regardless, it doesn't cost us anything to be nice. Mm. And so what does that look like? That's um, good. Somebody, that's approachable. That's, that's not being guarded. It's being confident. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's just being who you are. Yeah. And just flowing in that. Yeah. You know, you, know, you wake up, you see yourself in the morning, you tell yourself who you are, 
walk out, mm -hmm. look good, feel good, smell good, you know, <laughs> and you know, you just, yes. you just never know who's going to come across your path. Yeah. You need to be ready, you know, mm -hmm. and not even, not just for a relationship, just in general, in life, you know, because yeah. outside of a relationship, you're, you're much more yeah. than just that, yeah. that piece, because once you get married, I mean, as you know, I mean, you're still who God created you to be, and you still have a purpose. So you you wear different hats, yeah. you know. So I would say, you know, just I mean, as far as you know, your energy, just be nice. Yeah. Because to me, that just makes you approachable. Yeah. You know. I agree. Jazzy Faye. <laughs> um, one of the questions, or I guess like topics that looms around when I have these conversations with guy friends, or questions that I've been asked by guys before, were, do I think I'm too intimidating? Um, yeah, I am. Yeah, such a strong-willed person, or I'm educated, or this, that, and the third. So she got a degree on the wall, people. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <a degree. laughs> Do you feel like you um, you're too intimidating? And honestly, one, no, I don't think I'm intimidating. But two, I can't answer that question because I don't know where your self worth and self value sits with you. Ooh. That's a you thing. Ooh. Self esteem is called self esteem. <laughs> so. I can't control where you sit with yourself That's and true. if if somebody else's accomplishments or things that they have done are make you feel less than I, there's literally nothing I can do about that and I'll be honest with you if you ever want me to turn me down for you to feel good about you we're not going to work anyway because I'm not going to ever not be me I'm not going to hover my accomplishments over you I never do that but I'm not going to not be me and I'm not going to, you shouldn't want your woman to downplay herself yeah. so that she can feel like a man. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's not it. If you a man, you a man. Come on. And that's, and that's it. That's that on that. Yeah. So I'm yeah, agree. that's the one question I think that gets the most annoying out of all of them. Besides of course the when or the why are you still single? Mm -hmm. That's good. So what do y'all think that we should be focusing on? It's questions that people are always asking us, mm -hmm. of course, but what do you think women should be focused on moving forward, especially in this year, especially in this season of their life? Because it's, it's hard. Let's, let's be 100, you know? You don't know. Sometimes you are afraid. You can walk in confidence, self-love, self-assurance every single day, um, but those questions do come up. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, you you got to be ready, you know, and you got to be sure too. And you can't wobble with every person to ask you the question. You got to be sure every single time because the questions are going to come. So what do you think some, what are some things that we should be focusing on in this season of our lives for those who are still single or those who are still engaged or engaged? Uh, the top three for me would be peace, happiness, and stability. Yeah. Um, one just, finding your peace of mind, finding a place of peace, finding your solace, because once you have peace, you're going to do what you have to do to protect it. And that's going to help you create boundaries and keep people away from you that can damage your peace or cause you to leave your place of peace. If it costs my peace, it costs too much. Mm. Um, Come on. So I would, I would say peace is, is focus on finding peace. Um, the next thing is stability you know, mental stability, financial stability, spiritual stability. You need to, to be in a stable place. If you have a rocky foundation, you trying to build a house on sand. It's going to crumble. Yeah. So you have to be solid with yourself and, um, and having those things and be able to self-sustain. Uh, a conversation that I had with some guy friends of mine, he had made the comment, he was like, a woman that doesn't ask for or need anything is a woman I would give the world to. And I under, you know, we had a full dialogue about it and I understood where he was coming from after he, you know, explained what he said. And it's just being able to be self-sustaining. And it's not to say that I don't want a man for certain things, but I don't need you for these things. Yeah. And in this day and age, especially of, you know, the scam and day and age and send me a cash app to take me on a date or whatever with, with how society has shifted and the That's culture, a mess, by the way. it is a mess with the way the culture has shifted. I can understand me and being more guarded in that area because it is a lot of people out here just looking for to come a up. come up. Yeah. So um, I would say stability and then happiness. Heal. You have to be whole. You can't, you don't want to give yourself half of a person. Find some happiness, find some wholeness, 
um, and, and have your whole self because marriage is not 50-50, it's 100-100. You take a whole person and another whole person. Because if you take two broken people and put them together, you just gonna broke a bit. <laughs> so those would be my three things I would say to focus on. That's good. KP, what you thinking about over there? Man, that was, that was good, yes. <laughs> um, I mean, in addition to finding peace, finding stability, and um, being happy with who you are, I would say, what story do you want to tell your future self? Come on. And your kids. Mm. Because how we live now is going to be part of our past, and it's a story yeah. that you're going to be asked to tell. Yeah. So what story? How, how you live now determines how your story um, is being written. That's and that's good. not me. That's Andy Stanley. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a question that anyone, wherever you are in life, what story do you want told about you? That's good. That you want um, to tell your, your future self and your kids. That's so good. Mm. And live in a way that you would be proud to tell your story. That's good. Oh, I forgot something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Go ahead. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna keep it all the way 100 because this is a conversation that you and I, uh, Logan, have had several times. Is um, if you know that you want to be married, you want to be a wife, you want to be a mother, you want to be all these things, you got to ask yourself the question: Are you ready for what you're praying for? That's a word. Are you? Are you? You're asking God, okay, send me my husband. Are you emotionally available for him? Have you severed the soul ties that you have with this guy you've been on again, off again with for a year, year and a half? Are you ready for that? Have you dealt with your trust issues that you have with men that were created by daddy issues that you had from the kid? Like, are you really ready for what you're asking for? So if you know that that's what you desire, then you have to deal with the things that can block you from having that. I can't pray to God and say, God, please send me my husband. But I, I have a placeholder right there. So even if God got my husband waiting off in the bleachers, chilling, come on, bleachers. He's like, you got somebody sitting in his seat. I can't even send the king to where he's supposed to go because it's the imposter on the throne next to you. Like, what's what's up? Imposter. <laughs> right. I mean, and that's those are just real things because we all have, you know, somebody we dealt with or you know, are dealing with it just kind of, you know, you keep them tucked away like, well, all else fails, let me just hit this person up. But no, you can't, you can't want one thing, but your actions be contradictory to what you're praying for. So I would say for those of us that really do desire marriage and desire to be a wife, like, you have to position yourself for those things and, and make sure that you're ready for what it is that you're praying for. I totally agree. Um, I would say, to add on to everything they just said, because it was a word on both sides of the channel, okay? Hope y'all caught that. Um, but your purpose, you know, sitting down, asking yourself the question, what lights me up? What makes me smile? What does not make me feel like I'm actually working? What could I do and time just keep passing by? You know, it doesn't even feel like I'm drained. It'll be work, purpose is work. Um, but I call it purposing instead of call it working. Um, but what comes natural to me? What's, um, what's a natural, actual gift that God gave me that I'm supposed to use while I'm here? Because if we're here, that, that means there's an assignment. There's something we're supposed to do. We're not here just because he was like, oh, I think Keisha and Alexis should go to earth just to hang out and go to brunch. No. If you are still on this earth, there is something that you're supposed to do. There is a gap that's missing that you're supposed to fill. Nobody else can sit in that seat. Nobody else can walk down that aisle. Nobody can create um, that business plan. Nobody else can paint that picture. You're supposed to do it. So outside of, dang, I ain't got no man. Dang, you know, I haven't had children. There's something I'm supposed to do. God is so much smarter than all of us. He knows what our next best move is. And he's, he's so key in timing. He's really good at that. He knows us way better than we know ourselves. So as ready as we think we are for certain things, he's like, no, I got you, daughter. You know, I only have the best things in store for you. You know, he walks before us, he goes behind us, he surrounds us, he lives within us. So a person that's always taking care of everything that you're gonna touch next, of course, he's thinking about your now, you know? So, 
I would say for sure, focus on purpose. So just closing out, ladies, what book would you recommend that these women read? Um, one that's touched your life, uh, one that got you centered or made you laugh or just gave you a good word. What book would you all recommend to the ladies? Uh, well, I have to <clears throat> recommend that they read Never Ask for Permission Again. Come on. Of course. <laughs> uh, that, put that at the top of your, your list for 2020. Go ahead and crack that open January 1st. <laughs> um, but a book that I read, and I guess this would be more for the younger women that are listening to the podcast when I was in my 20s, was a book called Lady in Waiting. Mm. Um, I have to go find the author so you can post it when you um, share everything. But the name of the book was Lady in Waiting. Lady and wait. I'm here for it. How about you, KP? What you thinking? I'm thinking, I think there's two books that came to mind. One was Single, Sassy, and Satisfied by <laughs> Michelle Hammond. Like Hammond? Oh, yeah. Michelle McKinney Hammond. Yes, her. And then the other book is um, The Rules of Dating by Andy Sam. Mm. Those are the two. Come on. So, uh, so you all know that the Socation Podcast is sponsored by Audible. So all you have to do is click on the link in the show notes and you can get one of these books for free and listen to them while you're driving to work, um, you know, cleaning up the house, doing your daily routine. So you can grab your book on the Socation Podcast just for listening to this episode. Um, I just want to thank Jasmine and Candice. Is there anything else you want to leave the ladies? One quick note, and that is don't sell yourself short. Come on. And don't allow anybody to make you feel less than who you are. Don't carry yourself or act like you know, your used car or what have you when you're not. Because I think you stated before we started this is that people respond to how you allow them to treat you. Yeah. So it's all in what, like what Jasmine said earlier, it's, it's, it's about how you see yourself. Yeah. And so when you get the right perspective of who you truly are and you walk in that, you won't allow anybody to disrespect you because you deserve it. God knows you deserve it, and he's going to provide it for you. So you have to trust him that he's going to provide what you need when you're walking in a manner that's pleasing to him. So don't sell yourself short. Don't be like everybody else, because believe me, you want to be different. Come on. You want to be different. You want to stand out. So I would just say don't sell yourself short. Don't act in a manner that sells you. sell yourself short, that's good. because you deserve better. Mm. I hope y'all sipping tea, <laughs> juice, <laughs> some child, alkaline water. Go ahead, Jasmine. Um, my last tidbit would be to love yourself, set boundaries, mm. and never sell. Yeah. And I'm a I'm a harp on the, the set boundaries. We know what it means to love ourselves, and you know what self worth you have to do to get there. So it's ugly. It's not fun. Ask yourself the tough questions, but get to a place where you can get up every day, look in the mirror and say, I love me and truly love the person that you're looking at and the person who's looking back at you. You, We all know what we have to do to get to that place. So I'm going to leave that for you to do. But with setting boundaries, again, nobody can do to you what you don't allow. Set the boundaries and then stick to your own boundaries. Because the thing is, people can't cross boundaries that we set unless we let them. <laughs> so you got to set your boundaries and make sure that you're sticking to them as well. If you, you know, started going on dates and you going out and mixing and mingling and you decide, okay, this is the person I'm kind of feeling this guy, I like him. But you know, you like to kiss, but that's a boundary for you. And you don't need to be out here just kissing because it's going to lead to something else. <laughs> then look. Sis, stop. Don't let them kiss you. Don't <laughs> stop yourself. Like, set your boundaries and stick to them. Boundaries are extremely important because they they keep us one from getting lost in the sauce and getting all caught up in stuff when you get caught up in. But it it sets respect and it lets a person know what your expectations are. And he's not gonna go further than you let him go. Yeah. But the minute that you waver on your boundaries, go run him over. 
every mm-hmm. single time. And don't just set boundaries with me and set boundaries at work, set boundaries with friends, set boundaries with family, set your boundaries and stick to them and don't settle. That's good. Yeah, let me tell you about this episode. It was good. It was good. I hope you all took notes. Um, this is not going to be the only girl side chat conversation that I do. I'm going to do it with some other friends of mine. Um, so look forward to that. And I will catch you all on the next episode of the Soulcation Podcast. <laughs>